Philadelphia Eagles, and he said all the right things about my time here was great. It was a great learning experience. <laughs> I've got some great friends still in Philadelphia. I could have been a better teammate. I could have been a better leader. Do you realize how much this is eating him up inside? Nobody wants this game more for the Washington fan base than Carson Wentz to prove to the Philadelphia Eagles organization you made a mistake by letting me go. Well, speaking of that Washington fan base behind enemy lines right now, our friend John McMullen's joining us from FedEx Field. John McMullen right here, Jacob Media. John, good to have you along for the ride here. And uh, just want to talk real quick about Carson Wentz and whether or not you buy into the idea of this being just another game. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, I heard Dee Gunn saying what he said. Nick Sirianni talked about, look, he's coached for a lot of teams. When you come back and you face that team you're with, it's just human nature. You want to do a little bit more. Yep. We talked about it last week with Jalen Rager a little bit. And, you know, that got a lot of play. Jalen was like, he was specifically asked the question, do you want revenge against the Eagles? And he said, yeah, sure, why not? You know, he, he wanted to do well, but at the same time, you know, Jordan Mailata was just out at midfield giving Carson Wentz a, a, a hug. There are a number of players on this team that really like Carson, that still like Carson. Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, Fletcher Cox loved Carson Wentz, still loves Carson Wentz. So there is some stuff I think that is a little bit overblown in that the entire team turned on Carson. But no doubt he wants to play well against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, and I also heard you talking, Mark. Yeah, he's he might press. That might be, you might be able to take that at, as an advantage because this is a guy who, who presses and won't give up on a play on plays versus normal teams and normal games in every week. So when he's trying to do a little bit more than even that, he, he might be susceptible to mistakes. John, do you agree that uh, Gannon cannot just rely on his four-man front to, to rattle Carson, that he's going to have to bring extra pressure to get into Carson's face a little bit more? Yeah, well, the pressure thing, I, you know, I go back and forth. So you go week one versus week two, right? DeAndre Swift is averaging 10 yards a carry. So right. if Antonio Gibson is averaging 10 yards a carry, you're not going to see a lot of pressure. If they bottle up Antonio Gibson like they bottled up Dalvin Cook, you're probably going to see more pressure. Um, that's just the nature of this defense. They always want to go. They always want to get home with four uh, defensive linemen. I mean, always, 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 always. That's the preference. Um, Washington is dealing with some injuries. Uh, they lost Chase Rouye, their starting center, last week. So they have a backup center. They're not as good as they once were. That was once the strength of this team. When Trent Williams was here and, and Brandon Sheriff, the offensive line was great. It's not that same offensive line. I know the Eagles think they have a big advantage with their defensive line versus uh, Washington's O-line. Um, unfortunately, and I know Seth is not going to like this, they want to get home with four. Hey, listen, John, I, I, I get it, but you want to know something? The pass rush in a lot of ways, my friend, is just like the running game on the offensive side of the ball. You, you want to run the ball. You want to establish the run early. But at the end of the day, if it ain't working, you got to do something different. It's been the same situation on the defensive side of the ball as far as the pass rush is concerned. You want to get home with four, but the fact of the matter is you haven't gotten there with four. So how long, I mean, you run this risk of trying to get there with four and not getting there and letting Carson Wentz get into a rhythm and let him find his footing rather than out the gate applying pressure and then allowing that pressure through fakes and sugars and all these different things that you can do to allow your four man to get there. You, you understand what I'm saying? You kind of reverse engineering. It's, yeah. al it's, it's, it's almost yeah. like, you know, people say, oh, you run the ball to be able to pass and sometimes you got to pass it to be able to run it. Well, guess what? You can blitz to be able to get get there with four, and oftentimes, you know, you can bring four, you know, and if you really want to turn it up, bring five or six. Yeah, and, you know, last week they were more aggressive to try to stop the run with run blitzes as well, so that factors into it. Um, so I hear what you're saying, Seth. In, in the case of, of this particular game, I, I do think they look at, at the Washington offensive line and say, okay, that's a weakness now. So we shouldn't have to do that. Then you have the chicken and egg sentiment of, 
all right, the Eagles don't have a ton of sacks, but they got a ton of pressure on Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. That's just a quarterback who's going to get the football out. So you're not going to sack him a ton, but what happens on the back end? You have three red zone interceptions. So there are other good things that can happen if you got pressure. The Eagles got tremendous pressure on Monday night. I think if everybody sees that, they're happy with it. But if you look at the score sheet, they didn't have a lot of sacks, but they got tons of pressure and they created tons of plays defensively. I think that's the goal. This team constantly talks about, I mean constantly, guys. Nick Sirianni, Jonathan Gannon, Shane Steichen, everybody. They look at two statistics. They want to win the turnover battle, and they want to win the explosive play battle. And the analytics say if you win those both two, those two categories, you're going to win the football game. Everything else, you can throw for 400 yards and lose. We see that all the time. You can run for 200 and lose. You got to have eight sacks like the Tennessee Titans in the AFC Championship game and lose. If you win those two, if you win the turnover battle and if you win the explosive play battle, you're going to win the football game. That's what the Eagles care about. That's it. And to the point where, you know, I was talking about kick returns. Kick returns, little nitpicking here, but they were off. And they don't care. As long as they're winning the explosive play battle, the turnover battle, they don't care about everything else. It's white noise. John, they don't they, they don't care about, you know, the kicking game and the return game until it becomes a factor. You know, and, and you're better off addressing it before it comes a factor than having to lose a game to realize that you know you need a punt returner and a kick returner. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about field position. It's very evident to anybody who's yeah. watching the Eagles play these yeah. games. Quez Watkins doesn't want to return those kicks, man. He just <laughs> no, doesn't. No. And teams are just no. they're going to keep kicking it to the five-yard line and forcing him to run them, you know, and he's just pity-patting and, you know, doing what he's doing. Now, listen, the guys up front in front of him, they've got to block for him. They've got to open up some lanes. But sometimes, you know, when you're doing that job, you just got to pick a hole and just take off and go as fast as you can through that hole. It's pretty darn obvious to everyone who's watching that he wants no part of that. Go find you a kick returner, okay? I mean, you can yeah. talk about you can talk about Britton Covey. Yes, he feels the ball. You want him to do that. Guys have got to block. But you know what? You better go get you a guy that every once in a while can create and flip field position for you. And you better do it before it turns into an issue, in my in my opinion. No, I'm with you. In fact, I wrote about that on Jacob Sports, and that's one of the things where I said, I said, you know, Nick was very flippant about, I think Minnesota did one good thing in their game plan. It was such a bad game plan. They did one good thing, and they told Greg Joseph, their kicker, to use those mortar kicks and force Quez Watkins to, to return the football. As you mentioned, Seth, he doesn't look like he wants to return the football, number one. They were playing on long fields. And then you get to the end of the game, right? They were able to take advantage because Minnesota had a really, really poor defense. If you're playing a good defense and you have long fields, you're in trouble. Yeah. You're in trouble. And they're going to be tested. So I'm with you. They need to figure out this sooner rather than later. I think it should be Boston Scott, who's not going to be explosive. I agree. Not going to be a threat to take one home. But he'll get you to the 25. Maybe he'll get you to the 30, 35 if it's well blocked. That's all. What you can't have is those long fields. And Paul Domowicz came up with this stat. Five out of six times before Monday night, the Eagles have lost when they had starting field position uh, uh, minus 20. So Nick Sirianni might want to look at that analytic before saying, all right, we, we sliced and diced the bad defense. Yeah, you did, but if a good defense shows up and you go that long field, you're going to be behind the eight ball for the entire game. Hey, hey, John, does this need to be a coming out game for Hassan Reddick today? We've been waiting so long for him to get this so-called sack, you know, because of his pedigree coming into the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think Gannon has utilized him to the best of his ability yet. He's a pure pass rusher. He's not a cover guy. He's not very good against the run. But if he can get a couple of sacks, I think that'll help a lot of people breathe a little bit better in terms of a sigh of relief. Yeah, sometimes styles make fights, uh, D Gun. Yeah. And yeah. if you look at, at 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 you know, Decker and Sewell in week one, really good tackles. 
Uh, Brian O'Neill, really good tackle week two. And that's normally where Hassan Reddish is going to line up to rush the passer. Um, this week it's Sam Cosme, it's Charles Leno, so maybe he has more of an opportunity. I do think this is a game where we need to see something from Hassan Reddish. Yeah. Otherwise, you start to say, what what's going on here? Yeah. But also, I think, you know, Jonathan Gannon needs to move him around a little bit more. So Thank you. If Brian O'Neill's on the other side, maybe take advantage of Garrett Bradbury, have, have Hassan Reddick rushing from the inside. I think he needs to do more of that and figure out what the best matchups are. John, I'm not asking you to predict his final stat line, but is the stage at least set for Jalen Hurts to show some more consistency at the quarterback position, have another great game for himself? I'm going under 83.9. I don't want to be a hater, but I don't think he's going to complete 83.9% of his passes. I think uh, Washington is going to be in the zip code of the receivers, so it'll be a little bit more difficult. But look, Jalen Hurts is playing at a really high level. Uh, they're a better team. They're a more talented team. Now, it is a division game. Seth will tell you, division games tend to be, there's such a familiarity they tend to be closer uh, than teams that maybe don't know you as well. So I think this will be a bigger test for Jalen Hurts, and I expect them to pass it. I expect them to win the game. All right. I like that. Can I get your final prediction then? Uh, I think the Eagles win in 26-20. So wow. maybe a little bit tougher than people uh, think it's going to be, but it's a road game. I know it's going to be about 50-50, probably Eagles fans, uh, uh, commander fans, but – uh, that that division aspect of it, the familiarity aspect of it, and it's a short week, too, for the Eagles going on the road. So that's a little bit, even though it's a short road trip, uh, that, that hurts a little bit as well. Understood. John McMullen, our Eagles reporter here at Jacob Media. Thanks so much for joining us from FedEx Field. Uh, hope you get to enjoy the game a little bit, my friend. All right, thanks, guys. Absolutely. John McMullis joining us from Jacob, uh, or rather from FedEx Field. The, we'll worst, back the with worst media field. In the NFL, by the way. thousand percent agree. There's no question about it. They ought to blow that thing up <laughs> yesterday. And truth be told, it's smelly. I'm not even kidding. It smells no, bad. I've I'm been not even kidding. too many times. <laughs> well, congratulations on being here at Ocean Casino yes. as opposed to FedEx Field. This is like Camelot compared to going down there. <laughs> we'll be back with more Eagles coverage coming up in a minute. fans on earth it's a bold statement but would you expect anything less from philadelphia 58 years of heartache creates a toughness a grit a resolve not found in most sure our prayers were answered